Temple Portiki District Council undertook a major building project, the Te Tāhuhu o Te Rangi Technology and Research Centre. This facility, located in the heart of the Oportiki Township, is intended to deliver an economic and business hub, arts and cultural hub and community hub, including reinvention of the existing library service. This documentary shares the stories of the local Oportiki artists that contributed their time and talent to create pieces of art for the new space. Local community identities also share their stories of the Whakapapa history and vision for the future. Ah, ko tangi moe a hau, no te whakatoe a hau. Well, we went through a selection process of, I think there were about 20, 24, 25 artists who had applied to be a part of this, this library project. But originally they had, um, the architects had done talk to me panels. It took us a while, but we convinced uh, our council that it would be more community spirited and with the most fabulous community artists. And took it to panels for me uh, pre-COVID. You know, we need to be able to take the next 50 years and what we're doing, even though we're using uh, some traditional uh, techniques, the the look of the future is new. Oh, well, Heke and I, I've known him for years and he's he had been out of action for about 20 years. So when the council came to see me about uh, taking part in this this uh, kaupapa, they asked who would I recommend, and you can't go past Hiki Collier because his work is all up around town. So that tells you of his expertise. So, like most uh, Māori things, it's always a male-female balance, and we work very well together, and we understand. We understand our Māori side, our taha Māori side, we understand the community and we know how to work with both. Yeah. One of the first things we did was, as women for Whakatoe, we're not normally allowed onto these new bills, these new sites. But for us women who are working on the site and inside the site, we had karakia so that we could move freely. And with a lot of women now who are builders, plumbers, things like that, you have to have those safety guards so that we can feel as though we're safe. Yeah. With the Purikia Art Society, they have got a a courtyard that they will both share. I really love the fact that they're going to be able to work together. We want to encourage all the artists, all the community to be a part of this whole thing because the library is really about maximising the space rather than just be a library. It's now a digital hub. It will be a, a, it will have exhibitions. It, it's going to be like a one-stop shop, yeah, but it's, it's about someone had to take it there. Someone had to lead it there and make it happen. And there's a, there's a good group of librarians, artists, uh, who are prepared to make it happen. On the panels, we have sculptural uh, paintings, uh, I have done a flag. I rescued some old rods, curtain rods from the old library and have made money tukutuku to recycle the old into the new. It doesn't matter if you've only started or whether you're experienced. If you get on that panel, we're all equal. My whole philosophy has been to create 
a whānau of artists. So we all look after each other. We all help each other. I constantly check up on them. This really is a biggie for most of them. Yeah. And, you know, it's about the works that you will be proud to share with the community, not only for this year, but in 50 years. And then the mokopuna will come and you, you'll be able to show them what you were doing at their age. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And I, I enjoy the new works that are coming through. Not so much the old works that have already been done and done and done and done. I'm more into what is your vision of the future of our community, of the art world. Yeah, love it. Uh, ko hiki kalea taku ingoa uh, Nō te whakantoi a hau uh, E tipi au uh, Ki ui Ki wangi nui a te whakantoi a Te tahu o te rangi well, What comes to mind Is A uh, rangi nui a papa tūnuku In the Māori philosophy from the time of the Tikore, when there was the nothingness, then Nā Tamariki Kiroto Rāhi or all the nothingness to Tikore. As they went enclosed, I suppose in today's world, we call it a bubble. Uh, they were enclosed within their bubble and all the tight, confined spaces. So the Tamariki decided uh, whoever, which one, eventually it was Tani that separated his parents, Ranginui and Papa Tūnuku. They were here to, of their parents. I'll start from the, the apex of the Tahu o te Rangi, with the, a design they call it the, the Takarangi which it creates the lightness in the dark. That is the, how I understand it in, in the terms of Whakairo. It's the Takarangi design. Hence, as they were separated, light starts to form to come through. That creates the hour of today. <coughs> And then we also have the mahis, uh, which is basically uh, na ringa ringa o te whare. Um, in, in Māori terms, and uh, 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 the ringa ringa is to the afi, na manuhiri to tene whenua. My job was trying to hide the nuts and bolts. So what came to mind, because there were so many nuts and bolts I had to cover, with this I decided to use nafitu. Uh, but using the nuts and bolts has the ahu of the fetu. So hence is why you have that design that you got on, on the mahis of the tahu of the rangi. Representing, representing I suppose you can say uh, the Milky Way. Kerunga to Kerunga Rawa. I will start with Tani. Uh, Tani separated his parents first, which is a po that's on the outside before you head into Te Tahu o Te Rangi. Um, at the top we have Ranginui. And at the bottom we have Papa Tūnuku. And then I have also a couple of their tamariki that's on that pole as well, which is uh, Tangaroa, uh, Tawhiria Mātea, uh, Datu of the, the Wind. He's the only one that's um, joined his father, Ranginui Keirunga. And then further at the top, I also have another design which represents Io. Uh, the creator of, I suppose you can say, the universe. 
in Te Ao Māori. Um, anything pertaining to land, waterways, uh, ika, food resources throughout the Nahere, which he had created for the sustenance of, uh, I suppose, the people throughout the world to sustenance to eat, to survive. The other po that goes on on the inside of the, of the tahu of the rangi, on that po I have put on the tafaki. Uh, tafaki is uh, is the atua that pertains to lightning, thunder, and when you know that he's he's hikoi hari keirunga, is when lightning and thunder appears when bad weather comes. And below him we have a uh, um, Tumatawinga, uh, God of War. We have war throughout the world as I speak of today. <coughs> so Tumatawinga is, 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 is the art of, of war. Come down a bit further, we also have uh, and he knew it before. The goddess, I would say, of death. Pertaining to Maui. Trying to defeat the impossible to become mortal. Failing that, uh, he was crushed by Henny knew it before. Through a little manu called the Tiwai Raka, we did a bit of a kata kata and woke her up. As as he saw Maui's uh, waiwais shaking <laughs> and, his, and his defeat and his, yeah. And this next one beside that on there, I have another female and her name is uh, Matake Paul. She's the actual old queer that um, showed the way for Tawhiki to he called Haere Ki Runga Te Terangi. Then I also have designs like um, the Aka, which is a vine intertwined with another culture, which is part of myself as well. It's uh, my Taiwi side. Um, to the descendants who arrived here in Oporsky, Whakatoya district. I also have uh, different types of manu on the po, representing they are actually our tuakanas, who are na tamariki o tāne. Now the design heading around the outside of the tahu o tarangi, the designs on those, they depict um, na pakit Pātiki, which is, uh, in, in our terms, is a flounder. There's a part there where I have got a, the, a fishing line. Uh, our old people also used, uh, besides the hinaki, they used uh, the bobbing system with a fishing line to catch nātuna. I also have a, another design which is relevant to today, uh, the coming of the pa nātauiwi to tēnei whenua. Uh, just a cup and a tea. I suppose you can say that's uh, an artist's prerogative to uh, put something in there that's not familiar to, or should not be there, but that's an artist's prerogative. I suppose if you did a bit of drenching throughout the Tao the of uh, uh, Otara, uh, Waiweka River, you probably would come across a cup and a saucer. Uh, so that's basically the corner rule that I had come up with this uh, concept for uh, Te Tahu o Tarangi. Kia ora, uh, ko Jamie Point in the ho, he uri a ho no te fakato here, nai tuhoi, te fano apunui me uh, Nati Awa, 
kai te noho ana hau ki konei i rote i te whenua o te whakatohia kai o Pōtiki. Kia ora, my name is Jamie Point. I'm a local here in Pōtiki and I, I sort of consider myself an Eastern Bay native. <laughs> I was first approached by Hiki Collier to be a part of this project. The Apex artwork or the um, kōruru um, component to the, the library Te Tāhuhu o Te Rangi. That particular art piece represents the ko of Rehua, which is kind of like the crown of Rehua, and um, it's said that, that some of the kōruru that I've, that I've been introduced to uh, recognises that as um, as being connected to the tāhuhu or, or, the, or, the, or a portal, essentially, it's kind of like I see it. I see it as 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 the as the part of the pūmotomoto, the fontanelle, and and so that the ko is like um, like a crown, essentially, and it's it's an energy centre, and that and this is what um, I'm trying to represent with this specific artwork. Yeah. I'm familiar with with a number of the artists, but but I, I haven't worked with any of them specifically on this project. So I've kind of been given my my space to do to do this specific work, along with the the lighting, um, the internal um, lighting that that goes along the um, the tahuhu of of the building itself. So that's um, that's another piece that I've been lucky enough to secure. A lot of the work that that I do involves light, and and there's sort of a crossover between 2D and 3D installation usually using glass elements and carved glass and, um, and projected light. So I love working with light because light is information, it's knowledge, it's awareness, it's consciousness. It's, to me it's the way that you can actually elevate your own consciousness through, uh, through understanding. So as a metaphor it's, it's very powerful to me and, um, and I love working with it. There's, 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 you know, a few, there's a variety of um, kōrero around uh, the ascension process and some sort of talk about Tāne as the atua or, um, who, who, who made the ascension, gathered the baskets of knowledge and brought them back to, back to earth for, for humanity. Um, it's very similar um, kōrero to Hermes, that's ancient Egyptian, Sumerian gods. Um, it's very interesting to me that there's, there's many connects with um, Tao Māori and, and ancient Egyptian mythology. mythology. There's, there's some deep spirituality that goes with that and, and I guess it's sort of um, made me really dive a lot deeper into uh, understanding what ascension is. Um, how we can raise our vibrations, what is the tree of life, how is that connected to the sacred vine that um, Tane um, climbed, he ascended the, the vine. So in many ways the site works sort of connected to that kōrero about, about ascension. It's, it's about understanding how we, we can actually use that for ourselves, how can we, how can we actually make that, make that connection and because if we're for me, if, if we're an open channel, then we can actually sort of make that connection to the upper realms and bring them into our body and, um, and access that knowledge for ourselves. So I think it's a, it's, um, it's a great, again, a great metaphor. Um, it's more than just a story because there's a lot of um, scientific knowledge out there now, quantum physics, around um, the energetic bodies, the, the chakra system and, and how we can actually bring information and, and light into our bodies and, um, and ascend in that, in that manner. Kia ora koutou. Ko Lynn Ristra, Taku Ingoa. I'm presently the Mayor of Oportiki District, but when I first came on Council in 2013, I was very quick to put my hand up and volunteer to be on the fundraising committee that had been set up here in the Oportiki District Council for councillors and staff who were interested in helping raise funds for our new the next Oportiki District Library. So I joined in 2013, but I know also that 
the aspirations for having a new library was actually on our long-term plans since as far back as 2009. So the previous building had reached its sell-by date and we were trying very hard to ensure that one of the core activities of the Oputiki District Council on behalf of its community was to fund for and provide another library. And the thing that I am most proud of to date for myself and um, being part of this fundraising committee were the activities that we've engaged in, especially around art, in order to promote the positive and the beauty, the beautiful, and the expertise of the people from Oputiki. We had three art exhibitions in the North Island. We had one in Auckland, one in Tauranga, and one in Wellington. And our artists from a whole range of different genre um, put forward their artwork. It was shown really well. We had a fantastic time doing it. And it was lovely to be able to reflect, again, the positiveness. And I really want to thank the artists involved because, because of what we were doing this for, the actual new library, they came on board and were very giving of their time, um, their knowledge and their um, talent, absolute talent in setting up exhibitions. And not only did we have a lot of fun doing it, we were praised highly by the um, professional establishments that we went to um, um, for our exhibitions. And it was great. And we had uh, opening evenings, we had um, um, a certain amount of time in two of the galleries and the um, shop which we made into a pop-up gallery in Tauranga. It was very exciting. And I'm really thrilled that those artists have continued uh, in support of what we're doing with Te Tahuhu or Te Rangi. Um, and their art and their legacy will be part of our um, new building. One of the things I particularly remember was the evening that we launched the name for the new space, which was gifted to us by Whakatoi here. And we had thought quite long and hard about how we would do this. And we actually invited several authors who have produced books um, to come to an evening. And we hosted an evening in the old library where we introduced the name, um, put forward the architect's designs, and we had those authors um, talking um, about their work and their importance, the importance of libraries. And we had uh, Sir Ranganui Walker, Mani Anstis, and Jerry Warren as the three um, authors particularly. And I had also asked, because uh, Ranganui Walker is my mum's first cousin, I'd also asked him if he would be um, able to uh, gift some signed copies of his books. And his wife was delighted to deliver a whole box of books to us for storage that would be um, finally uh, kept displayed and, and used in, in our library in the research area. So here we are. We've been held up a bit by COVID over this last year and this year, but in some funny ways, COVID ends up being the silver lining behind the cloud. And luckily for us, part of the provincial growth funding um, came forward as uh, COVID recovery funding for shovel ready jobs. And we were able to obtain funding uh, for the building um, from the provincial growth fund. We had already been very, very generously supported by um, Bay Trust, Eastern Bay Energy Trust, and the Lotteries Grant Board. 
So we already had a reasonable putia by then, which gets used in the building, and now we have been almost 100% funded, and to those people especially, a huge thanks. I look forward to knowing that this building, Te Tahuhu o Te Rangi, will be a very important digital and library hub for our community for the next 50 years. And I also love that the building sits on the place that was given to our community by the Oputiki Mechanicals Institute, who gifted the land and also any proceeds from the land to go towards a library. And I say once again, I'm excited because this is a core activity that a council must provide for its community and it will be very widely used. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful for all of those people who have been involved in its development, um, its, its growth and uh, its finishing, its building, and for those people who are helping make it beautiful. Kia ora. Kia ora, ko Fetu Walker tō kingwa. So my name is Fetu, um, born and bred in Wellington, schooled in Wellington. Uh, brought up in Upper Hutt, um, went to primary school, college and stuff down here. Um, had a lead career um, at the age of 16. But sort of always had that urge to come home to learn who I was. I actually did my diploma in seven and a half months. It was a two year, I think it was, maybe two and a half years. Um, had an opportunity to um, start with Rangi Hetzit and Erinor Hetzit down in Waifetu. The whanau pane, uh, Paneke was uh, the name of the, the kura. Uh, learnt so much there. First project I ever jumped on was a wakatauwa. Um, so learnt all um, the binding, um, all the homey joints, just basically how to make a wakatauwa. So I was very fortunate to be a part of that. And then one day I had a day off and I was walking past Tataya Whare, um, going for a fish at the wharf. And then I heard a bit of tapping, tap, tap, tap. And it just sort of resonated with me. What, what, what's this? What's going on in here? So walked in and I never left. And my involvement um, to be involved in this project, uh, Te Tahu o Te Rangi, uh, was actually a blessing. Like every iwi has got a style, or every waka's got a style of carving, or, or patterns, or design. I know that whakatō here, um, because we're like an alleyway between different iwi, like Te Rataha, Ngā Te Awa, Tū Hoi, Tamakai Moana, Aitanga Mahaki, Ngā Te Kahununu, uh, Ngāti Parau, Ngāi Tai Te Whāna Apunu, so you know there would have been a lot of, I think this place would have been um, adorned beautifully. Um, so we have none of that now because of the confiscations and the raupati. That was in the back of our mind to actually try and come up with an idea, um, utilising what you would see in, in your environment. Uh, we have two rivers here, um, you know, resources with the raupo and you know, different sort of things you might see in, in the environment. And so I utilised a lot of that to come up with um, certain patterns. Um, one, one, one pattern was um, Puhoro Nuchukaka, which is um, a generational, I suppose Nuchukaka means the beck of the bird. Uh, it's not actually means that, it's actually when a bird picks something up or eats a berry, flies away, disperses it and then that tree grows. So, that was one pattern um, I utilise a lot and just sort of mix it up with um, what I see in the environment and to be mindful too that um, we are multicultural now. It's not just the iwi or whakato here, we've got the hapuri, they've got the community and when everything, when everyone works together it's beautiful. Uh, I think our first, we used to have a monthly, uh, like a monthly kai with tangi mui and the rest of the artists and, and, and that was beautiful to see. Um, different ethnicities and different ideas come together and you can network and collaborate and come up with some fantastic ideas, I think, if you all work together. Um, Rangi and Papa, they sort of depict 
um, for for instance, it's um, a puna, a puna tiri, yeah, puna tiri for tangaro. So taking them out of that sort of human form, I suppose, and um, utilising what you see in, in the moana, those are the sort of patterns that we uh, and designs that we utilise for that. Ranginui, oh, well, that changed quite a few times. Um, the top of Ranginui sort of had to had to suit um, the art piece of um, of um, Jamie the Fananga Jamie Boynton. Uh, we come up with something that blends without taking anything away from each other. I think the hardest thing is trying to... Uh, and another thing with the um, Po, uh, the two Po, two, two po is that the, the designs are sort of rolling and flowing and, and ducking and dipping in and stuff like that. So it's just one continuous sort of flow of carving. Uh, so this was just an opportunity to come up with something totally different but trying to keep it um, Māori looking, or I wouldn't say traditional, but contemporary art, but traditional at the same time, um, and utilising what we have in our environment here in Opozuki, and, and being mindful of the community, um, all the different ethnicities and stuff like that, um, and and that's probably the next the next step is the um, to evolve um, tōku whakaaro, um is to evolve a pattern that. Um, that picks everyone. It would be quite unique to come up with something like that. For, um, I've got Scottish in me myself, so I sort of use a lot of Scottish sort of designs with Māori. Um, and, and, and you'd be very surprised, you wouldn't really see it, unless you did it by itself. Um, so just being mindful of our community, and I think for us, um, we've had devastation here with the Raupati back, and, and that's been a never-ending saga. Harakori, um, all the different haka and stuff like that, but um, without knowing that past, can't really move forward. So that's for myself. So when I first come home, um, is to learn who I was. And you, and you go through that emotional stage, as you do. Um, but when, if you don't, yeah, for me, it was um, learn that and move forward and move forward for the into the future. My main thing for the two po was to give our young ones um, inspiration for the future, um, and we did have a lot of young youth just sort of walk in. I was asleep one night, um, I did a lot of midnight and I watched through, and I was asleep one at one, half past one and I could hear these kids talking. I'm past one in the morning, and they were just working on the carving. Yeah, I thought, I woke up and I said, get on you boys, and I just went back to sleep. Um, and, you know, a lot of, I suppose it's it sort of, you know, we had a lot of, um, and we all mischief, aren't we? A lot of um, mischief kids come in, but they, you could see their eyes light up. Being able to have that opportunity to grab the, the file or the chisel and just start carving. And yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the patterns on there sort of come up myself. Yeah, you know, from having a, um, a t um, tamaku sort of background, how things can flow. Because um, our old people were just masters. We are, we are descendants of geniuses. That's how I sort of look at it. And I sort of wanted to try and. Um, not uffy them, but sort of, um, sort of try and do better, yeah, really, to be honest. Yeah. Not quite there, but um, not, a, not in a bad way, just to sort of take the art to another level. Um, like, like, like the Fanang of Jamie, yeah, it's very yeah, beautiful, beautiful as well. So, um, yeah. My name is Mary Fiddler. Uh, my art goes under, name, under my um, maiden name, Mary Whitelaw. I was doing my level five diploma with um, the Wananga here in Apotiki when our group was approached by Tangimoi Clay. Two thoughts collided in my mind that I'd been working on without realising that they would go together. And one of the pieces, the Takatakiro, piece was born. My first piece, the Takitakiro, I actually did the, the marquette like I was finishing the, 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 the main piece. So I knew all the little ins and outs and anything that could be a hiccup with it. The second piece, the Murawai's Cave, I wanted to give a woman's perspective, the, the sense of relief finding somewhere, the relief of shelter and just the, the, the untouched beauty of the place it must have been just glorious, you know. And so that's where that one came about. And so I've taken a long time on that because it's 
it's in acrylics, which I don't usually work with. I like a challenge, um, and I want it to be visually stunning. The other piece is more tactile, you can touch it, it's, and it's grounding, you know. Whereas the Murawai piece, mm, yeah, that's taken a lot of time, but it's been a real joy. I've learned a lot. I'm very grateful to be part of it, um, of the whole process, and to be working with such amazing artists. Every single, every single person has something unique to bring to the table and it, and it just opens up your mind's eye into the potential of what the, this project's going to look like. You know, it's just amazing. It's been amazing. Mm. But, uh, you know, part of my approach is um, I, there's a a mantra if you want to call it which is self is other and so that's my sort of approach so that if you don't win I don't win so it's in a in a sense my if you want to call it my self-interest is make sure that you win <laughs> and that everyone wins and so that that's my approach to what I do and when I left London I made a, a commitment to make a difference I had no idea what that would look like but just dance in the chaos of that and so when I first came back I'd set up an art centre in Oriba and then moved back down here to where I was born in the or Pertike, so it's done the full circle. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, an interesting journey. The conversation started, I think, maybe five years ago about the, the new library as such, that um, one of the councillors came and saw me about whether I'd take on organising a an art fundraising thing to start it all off. So that's where I first got involved with that. Not knowing what the timeline was going to be because it sort of staggered a bit until we got the provincial funding here that really made it happen. So, and I suppose I've been involved with that whole process all along. And then in, after that, then I became president of Apodiki Arts. So then it, now, now we have a a partnership or an MOU with council to use the space that's between the two buildings. So hopefully that's going to be a win-win for everyone. Um, well, it's really, really to do with the, the land, really, because we gifted some of the land to that to make the courtyard between the, the two buildings. Um, so that it's a, so again, so both parties win, right? So we can use it and so it'll, it'll be a work in progress about how that unfolds because we didn't want to really get it tied down too tight because to me it's, you know, it's, it's working with as you go rather than being stuck with something and then you can't do anything with it. So um, as far as the artwork, you know, there, there's some of the artists because in this space on the panels, there'll be a space for people to exhibit and that, that to be a non-changing exhibition space. But I think it's mostly maybe between 25 and 30 artworks that will be there for the next, whatever, 100 years. <laughs> Which would be a, a nice thing. So, and they had a, I mean, with Tangi Moe, she when the architects designed the space, um, they got some images of their idea was to do some tukutuku panels and decided that that's not what we wanted more local people's involvement on those panels. So they've just, so that's why it's developed into that, which I think is far better in the sense that to have the community buy into the project Know, and have some personal input rather than 
a, sen a sense of being a bit more like a museum rather than a, a living space. Um, I have some of my, one of my pieces will be part of those. Um, but yes, no, I've been working alongside with Tangi Moi um, to get that together. And because we'll have an exhibition here running at the same time, which will be called New Beginnings. Um, so any, anyone who didn't get their work selected to be in the library for that part can put work into this space. And so we'll have that in here at the same time as when it all opens. So I think it'll be quite a, a celebration. Uh, kia ora, my name is uh, Sahara Murray Mogarangi Jobin. I was born and raised in Opotiki. My son will be fifth generation. I got into art since I was very young. I used to give them away as gifts and trinkets and my, my family can attest to that I was always giving them stuff. I decided to study art and photography at college but I was going through some pretty tough things at the time that was pretty dark and depressing and you know being a teenager you don't really want to talk to anyone and it was um, coming across in my art as being too dark of a subject matter and it was quite concerning for some of my teachers so they told me that I should well they didn't ask in what was wrong with me but they said that I should liven up my art and add more smiles or make it seem more positive and that really shut me down because it's like, oh, well, this is my only way of expressing myself. And if that's not good enough, well, then I'm not going to lie and make it seem more bubbly than it actually is. So I stopped when I was about 14. Didn't start up again until I was about 23, 24, doing the um, Māori Indigenous <laughs> Arts course. Um, I took it from level three up to level five and then I've passed with a diploma so really happy with that and um, starting my business using the skills that I've learned from that course like making these earrings and other stuff. Um, my pieces that I have been asked to put into the library by Tangi Mui, she approached us after our course, a few of us, and asked if we'd be keen enough to put our artwork in there and I have two pieces one piece or the first piece is about the androgynous people in our community um, I felt like there wasn't enough representation towards gender or sexuality in any of the pieces in the library and that's quite a important factor I think. The androgynous piece is about having both feminine and masculine energy and that's why it's half and half. You can see it as if you covered up one half it would be seen as both um, one side masculine and other side feminine. It has the non-binary flag in the background. My second piece is a to pay homage I suppose to um, Manuka honey that we have in our area because there's other pieces um, showing the positives of where we live. So I thought doing the bees as well as not so nice subject, but the or the decline in their um, population and how they're getting wiped out by us is not the greatest. This piece will be a 3D piece and it's going to have stained glass or perspex as well as a painted mural of New Zealand flora and fauna and I'm really privileged to be able to have this, these pieces in the library hopefully for a very long time. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, my name is um, Hataraki. Uh, I'm uh, a pukinga, uh, mo te mahi whakairo. 
I first started under a low grower by the name of Alan Norpeta uh, from Ngāti, Ngāti Whātua, who was taught by uh, his grower uh, Henare Tuka, who was a master carver, uh, fought with the Māori Battalion and was a master in weaponry. I said to the old grower I've been carving over three, three years now, and he said to me if I was to stop now, it'd be a waste of time. So I've been um, doing it for a, a wee while now. Um, I've learned under uh, many artists, but I know um, what I know majority uh, through uh, Heke Collier. We've got a connection uh, to the Colliers uh, through my grand, great grandfather's line, uh, but that's another story. Uh, the Kaupapa, um, basically, uh, I'm here to support Heke uh, and this whānau. Uh, Kāre te mutu ngā mihi ki aia, uh, e whāngai au uh, nā mea e pāna ki uh, nā mātua tipuna nā taonga tukuiho o rātou kuwe he atu. So, um, yeah, a kaupapa. Uh, I've learnt so much on this uh, regarding uh, carving a different medium, regarding the shape of the of the piece. There's a, in a karakia that was composed by uh, Tohuna Whakairo. Uh, it, it, it goes, uh, kei te kimi i runa, kei te kimi i raru, kei te rapa i runa, kei te rapa i raru, kei te mōwai a runa, kei te mōwai a raru. So it's searching uh, in the wood for our tipuna. It's searching in the wood for for uh, ngā kōrero tukihoru, uh, for um, the history, for Kairo is also um, a portal from uh, from this world into the, the spiritual world. Art is life. Yeah. Um, hi, my name's Christopher. I've always had a passion for art I've always it's it's an expression of myself so I've always enjoyed it not for other people but for myself it's a way for me to show who I am and to express myself through art because sometimes I find it hard to say the things I want to say but I can express it through the creative process uh, when I was in college, that's where I stopped doing art at the end of my college years because I valued the opinions of others rather than how I felt about my art. And I think that was a mistake. I think you should always value how you feel about your art first and how it makes you feel and the reasons why you're doing it not for the not for other people's needs or wants I guess um, I started back doing art on my when we started our Māori visual arts course uh, well, I've been doing that for three years and graduated with my diploma of visual arts um, it was a good way to get back into it and have that motivation to keep producing and I have really really enjoyed it. It was like I was missing a part of me for not doing art for nearly 10 years <laughs> and getting back into it, yeah, it's just felt like I was me again. Um, and having this opportunity to create something that's going to be in the community for 50 years is, is amazing and that's that a piece of me is going to be in our library for 50 years and encouraging other people who maybe have been put down by others or have stopped doing their art because they feel like it's not good enough or they feel like they can't make it. Yes you can, you just got to keep going and you've got to, you've got to believe in yourself because your art is important. My piece is about colonisation and the racism and all the ties that 
that's held against our people, like, and the struggles to move forward. Uh, yeah, it's a very heavy piece. And at first I wanted to make it quite light and, and beautiful, but it's not a beautiful subject. It's a heavy subject. So there's a lot of dark colours and a lot of dark representation of the hurt and the mamai and, and the sacrifices and just all that in one piece. And I hope that I've expressed that in a way that people will appreciate. Kia ora, my name is John McLeod. <coughs> I'm involved with this uh, project with the library. Well, we've got these um, big panels to be put up uh, on the big concrete panels, um, plywood, and we want to put some edging around them. So um, <coughs> the first meeting we had <coughs> with all the architects and so on, I thought, well, okay, we'd better draw this, do a prototype so everybody knows what they're talking about as such. And this is the actual um, <coughs> apply what that goes on to the um, concrete panels and this is the edging a remu edging recycled and um, <clears throat> this enabled us to so all of us to, to come on board with this and so he said we'll actually color this here as well so if the actual artwork doesn't go right to the very top and so on it would look neat and tidy so that's been organized <clears throat> the next thing that happened was we looked at this there and on the plans it talked about this as being a wedge and we said, oh, what's this wedge? So I drew the actual, made this up according to the plans and specifications and showed everybody. They said, yes, that's where we wanted as such. But as we went through, things evolved and changed. <clears throat> and we were talking about putting a, a sculpture or something on here. But then also one of what happened, one of our artists, <clears throat> one of our carvers, made up a big bird, you know. And um, <clears throat> we all thought, oh, carpi, that looks really, really good. So we said, oh, how are we going to fit that on? And what we thought this part here, this roundy part here, wasn't really applicable. Everything else is square or rectangular. So we made another one up. <coughs> and, <coughs> and instead of having uh, the, the round part here, we cut this off. This is just a rough um, <coughs> sample piece. But this is where basically the big um, rafters go up. And we need to fit this around the, the, the gap between the rafters and the actual concrete panel. So that's, a, so that's been approved of. We'll make this out of um, <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> pine and it'll be stained the same as the rafters. And the birds will attach onto here. So that's basically what I've been doing. So there's been a lot of corridor with the artists, a lot of corridor with the, um, <coughs> the builders and the architects and so on. And so I've basically been commissioned to make 12 of these now and that in a month's time we'll install them all there. Yes, that's my contribution as such, uh, being a komatu I suppose, and to encourage the artists and the carvers and, and so on and so on. Yeah. Well, first of all, my name is Kay McLeod and this is my moko, Alice. She's joined me today. My job is providing cups of tea and doing uffy and looking after people rather than being a direct artist. I'm an artist in my own way with fiver and flax, harakiki and things, but that's my job, just cups of teas and making sure that things like that happen. I think it's going to look wonderful when it's all done and it's so nice to have so many people all working together on a project. Hi, um, my name is Chris. I've always lived in Oportiki. I'm from Whakatoya. Um, my art piece is um, Be Wise Accessorise. It's all about COVID. It's got 3D pattern at the back because COVID is very 3D dimensional. It's not just one thing. It's also a pattern that it's on the whāraki in the whārenui, so it's a protection pattern. It's got um, three colours on there being Māori and non-Māori and it's got kōrūs on it which are red to represent all the people that have passed away. Um, 
It's got cogs on it to that we all work together as cogs so that that we were very successful with COVID and um, it's got a kiwi in the middle which it's got a plague mask on and it's talking about wearing masks and keeping yourself safe. My name is Brian Milner. I grew up in the South Island, mostly grew up in Dunedin, although I was born in Christchurch. When I was very young, I picked up cameras and loved playing around with my mum's camera. And uh, that's my journey, really. So when we shifted up here, I met Kay and John McLeod, who um, managed the Hokitai domain, taking photographs of the fungi and the trees and the wildlife, the insects, doing night walks, and I love that sort of stuff, bugs and things like that. The creation that's around is absolutely fascinating to me. So then it was my task to make this image, which I have just, just at this time finished, and it's about to go away to get printed. Um, so it's going to be a banner um, depicting Taki Taki Rao and some of the local environment, along with some of the um, and wildlife and insects that are in the domain. So this is going to be interesting to see. It's looking really good on the computer. Um, how it looks on the thing will be another matter to tell, but I've got everything hopefully colour balanced right and it looks really bright and contrasty. Just um, doing something with my photography has um, really helped me a lot and uh, just to bless others with it and just my thanks to the people for picking me and um, letting me take part of this whole, whole thing. Kia ora, I'm Jo Hunt and it's my huge privilege at the moment to be the kaitiaki and the library manager for this um, wonderful project, this new library. Modern contemporary libraries are um, dynamic community spaces and um, they provide opportunities for people to connect and uh, explore and discover and to relax and take some time out and do all the traditional library things as well and uh, one of the fabulous things about this is Te Tahu Otarangi's architectural design um, nurtures and supports these opportunities and so right from the uh, the very outer of the building all the way through to um, the activities that, that will take place in that building, are all about supporting the connection of the community or providing the, holding the space for the community to connect. And so it's been an amazing experience over the last many months to watch the community art evolving within the building, the carving, uh, the commissioned art and the exhibition spaces that uh, represent the future um, and to have so much community involvement and, and support in this when not just opening a space as a library we're, we're um, giving birth to a community taonga. It's pretty special. Truly awe-inspiring, uh, humbling to have people in the community who are so committed and, and so totally get the kaupapa of what a, um, a modern library can do in the community and I guess over the last several years as we've staggered from one um, not fit for pers purpose building to another the, the community including the artists have come come with that, us on that journey and uh, so it's been fantastic to, to watch what's been coming through and the conversations and the, the sort of sh shifting earth, I guess, and um, just to experience the uh, just the evolution of, of that and the, the growing commitment, the depth of commitment that people have to it that spreads throughout the community, you know, beyond the individual artists to their whanau and um, up and down the street, people take in a huge amount of interest in what's going on. I guess one of the really cool things is that uh, this has been the site of the library since 
uh, the late 1800s when it was first established as the Mechanics Institute and it's um, maybe the fourth iteration of, of building on that site but this one has truly kind of come from the ground and, and from the community and, um, and so represents where we are and where we're heading as, as a place and as a, uh, a community of people who are, are working for their future and the future of their tamariki. It's um, really great to see that we've been able to do it in the right place. Kia ora tato. my name's Pete Radley and I live out at Ohiwa. Uh, my wife and I have been here for the last 25 years or so. I've been sculpting a mix of wood, uh, casting some glass and using stones that I found in nature um, in the sculpture. I was uh, aware of the fact that Tangimori was I was looking for artwork to go into the new library and when I came to visit the building I was very struck by the big space that uh, opened up and it just seemed to me that it was crying out for having something uh, within that big space hanging and I came up with the idea of a large spiral which I've carved out of a a cowrie slab that's come down from up north. It symbolises the movement of knowledge in and out of the library. It's uh, also a symbol of creativity and the role that the library plays in the community to foster that, that energy. It's quite a, an honour to be able to put a piece of work out in the community. As a sculptor, you don't often get those opportunities. I just uh, hope that it inspires people, gives people pleasure, the simple shape, the beauty of the wood itself. And uh, yeah, just grateful for the opportunity to share with the community a bit of the sort of work that I spend my life at, at, at the harbour. The, the landscape and the people here uh, have been great inspiration for my work and it's nice to be able to pay some of that back to the community. Kiara.